A 2008 survey of Canadian and American sex therapists found that the average time for heterosexual coitus was seven minutes. That is the time taken by a man to ejaculate following vaginal penetration. Yet premature ejaculation is the most common male sexual dysfunction, with prevalence estimates ranging from 20 to 30%. While premature ejaculation may not directly cause serious health problems, it can cause social or personal problems and could lead to fertility issues. A 2014 descriptive survey of over 1,400 women showed that 22% of the women surveyed reported that a man's ejaculatory problem had previously led to relationship breakups. Granted, lack of attention was ranked as the number one cause of distress, not ejaculatory control per se. Nonetheless, it's an important health issue to address. While four subtypes of premature ejaculation technically exist, the most recent evidence-based definition in the DSM-5, the American Psychiatric Association's Manual for Diagnosing Mental Disorders, outlines it as ejaculation within one minute following penetration and before the individual wishes it, and it has to happen all or almost all of the time, and for at least six months. Of course, one popular treatment option is pharmacotherapy. A 2015 systematic review outlines a fairly large list of drugs that have proven effective, including antidepressants, which have the sort of side effect of prolonging ejaculation time. And while medication is generally the first line recommendation for lifelong premature ejaculation, meaning you've always had the issue, there are other options without the same risk of side effects. And even if you have lifelong premature ejaculation, it doesn't mean that you need antidepressants or other drugs to fix your problem. There are tips and tricks all over the internet to last longer in bed, such as distraction, so thinking about something unattractive or complicated, drinking alcohol, wearing multiple condoms, desensitizing sprays, and masturbating prior to intercourse. And while perhaps successful acutely, these methods detract from the pleasure of lovemaking. And according to a 2016 review in the journal of Translational Andrology and Urology, are generally unsuccessful over the long term. Three independent meta-analyses concluded that combined drug and behavioral therapies have good supporting evidence, which is where drugs delay ejaculation while men learn behavioral techniques and then are weaned off the meds as they learn better control. Granted, behavioral therapies have been shown to be effective on their own in the absence of drugs. One of these behavioral techniques is the start-stop technique, which basically involves stopping just before you feel like you're about to ejaculate, ceasing stimulation for 30 seconds or so, and then resuming once you feel like you've regained control. Since men with premature ejaculation see sexual excitement as two discrete points on a continuum, no excitement and ejaculation, this technique teaches men to live more in that mid-range of sexual excitement. It can also be practiced during masturbation as a sort of training tool, something referred to as edging, where you stop right before climax, continue, and repeat. The squeeze technique is another method with empirical support, and I'll just leave an article in the description about this one. Pelvic floor exercises have also shown some promise, with one study showing that men with a mean ejaculation time of 30 seconds were able to increase it to about two and a half minutes after 12 weeks. While the specific exercises in this study were more complicated, you can try to contract your pelvic floor muscles like you're holding in your urine, and hold it for 10 seconds for 10 reps. And you can find a variety of these exercises online, but experts recommend finding a certain certified pelvic rehabilitation practitioner to guide you properly. Other practical tips from sexual health experts include increasing foreplay and increasing communication. Being open about the issue and finding a treatment that works for you should be feasible, given how common the problem is and how many solutions there are. So with a combination of these science-based tips and techniques, some research on your own, and personal trial and error, I hope you find this to be helpful. All right, what is going on everyone? Uh, first of all, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching the video. Um, if this video is seeming like it's coming out of nowhere, uh, it's actually based on a giveaway that I did on Instagram where I asked you guys to vote for what you wanted to hear me cover in my next Science Explained video. And by far, this was the most highly requested topic. So I just did a bunch of reading, ton of research, and put together scientific video that I could on this topic. Um, so hopefully it was helpful to you guys. Um, I also want to really thank Let's Get Checked for sponsoring this video. Let's Get Checked is an online diagnostics platform that allows you to get tested for STDs from the comfort and convenience of your own home, which is really nice because uh, sometimes it's a little bit awkward or uncomfortable to go to a medical clinic and get checked for some of this stuff. So Let's Get Checked is a really viable and convenient alternative to that. And their broadest at-home STD check covers 10 of the most common bacterial and viral infections including all of these and many of these can remain symptomless for years and many medical clinics don't test for all of these and some of these STDs can cause infertility in men and women and so for the sake of protecting yourself and your partner uh, I think it's important and responsible to get yourself checked um, so I actually had their complete 10 STD checked on myself 
Uh, basically, I collected a small sample of blood and urine from home, sent it back in a prepackaged and prepaid envelope, and the samples were processed by their lab, and my results were available online just a couple days later. And one thing that I really liked about the process was being able to speak to a nurse at any time during the testing by phone call or text chat. And I actually had one quick question about collecting the urine sample, uh, so I gave the nurse a quick call and she got me sorted out right away. Um, so if you guys are interested in getting checked, uh, I highly recommend Let's Get Checked, and you can learn more about that at the first link in the description box below. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, if you liked it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Um, also, if you like these sort of off topic, uh, still health related, but not fitness related videos, um, just let me know by commenting below. And if you have any suggestions for future Science Explained videos, uh, maybe slightly off topic Science Explained videos, uh, just let me know again by commenting below. Um, if you happen to be new, uh, don't forget to subscribe. I have a full playlist of videos, uh, mostly to do with exercise science and nutrition, where I cover peer reviewed literature in some detail in a sort of informative, but still informational way, as you can check those out. Uh, thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.